Hey my lovely papercraft friends, thanks so much for joining me today and welcome to another video of papercraft business. Now today in this video I'm going to show you exactly how you can assemble and put together the mechanics of the one and only Lawn Fawn Magic Iris die. Now this isn't a video that shows you how to complete a Magic Iris card. No, 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 not this video, not today, but they will be coming starting from next week. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see those. This is simply one devoted video that provides you with a full tutorial on how you can put the magic iris together completely in its full working form. Also, I'm going to show you the other add-ons for the magic iris die and how they actually complement that die. Now for those of you that are new here, my name is Lisa Walsh and welcome to my channel. And if you're looking for a little creative inspiration to top up your creative inventory of ideas, then feel free to subscribe as I love to upload a new video every single week. Well, at least I try to do my best to do so anyway. Now stay with me till the end of this video so that I can show you different ways that you can use the add-on dies as well. So are you ready? Let's do this. Now there are two things I absolutely love about the Lawn Form Magic Iris die set. One, not only does it provide an awesome interactive element to your card or project, but two, that it can be quite versatile in the sense that it can be adapted to create any type of design for any occasion card. Now the Magic Iris has a purpose and that purpose is to create an interactive mechanism which enables that mechanism to open and close shut to reveal a secret sentiment or a hidden image or anything that your heart desires. Therefore, it creates a nice surprise for the recipient when they use the handle to pull the centerpiece open to reveal the hidden element that you've put behind the Magic Iris centerpiece. Now there are three main elements of the Magic Iris that I'm going to be talking about today in this video. And the first one is the one and only Lawn Fawn Magic Iris die. Now this is a main die that creates a mechanism for the Magic Iris. So if you want that interactive element on your card, then this is the die set you need. You don't necessarily need anything else. This is a die set that will create the Magic Iris interactive element on your card. So the second die set that you can get for the Magic Iris is the Magic Iris add-on. So the best way for me to describe this die set is that it acts like what I call a cover plate. A cover plate which hides the mechanism element of the Magic Iris. So basically, once you've created and assembled the mechanism of the Magic Iris, you can use a Magic Iris add-on or cover plate if you like to hide the mechanics of the Magic Iris by simply adhering it on top. So therefore, the Magic Iris add-on provides yet another opportunity for you to create a whole new concept or different look and design for your card or project. So the third die set that you can get for the Magic Iris is a Magic Iris Scalloped Add-on. Now it does the same thing and it can be used the same way as a Magic Iris Add-on and it provides us with another element which you can use to create a different design altogether while still creating the Magic Iris interactive element as the main focus or concept of your card. Now, in my opinion, the Magic Iris Scalloped Add-on die gives you a much more feminine look for your card. And also, again, it can be decorated however you like with whatever you want. Okie dokie, so now that we've covered the Magic Iris Add-ons, I just want to remind you that you don't need to purchase any of those add-ons. You can just simply have the Magic Iris die to create an awesome project. Now the add-ons can therefore be used to create total different looking designs like I said before and they also hide the mechanism. But later on stay tuned on this video because I'll also show you what those add-ons look like in their full form once they've been die cut. So moving on, this video like I said is dedicated to creating the Magic Iris mechanism only. So let's get to it, hey? 
So the very first step that I highly suggest to creating the Magic Iris die is to do all your die cutting first. So you're going to die cut all the pieces all in one hit. So the first die that you're going to die cut is what I call the donut ring. Now you want to die cut these out three times. Now I used heavyweight cardstock, which was Nina and 110 pound cardstock, just to give that extra strength to the mechanics of the card. Next is what I call the sausage balloons. Now you want to die cut three of those and each sausage balloon has a tab on one end and a significant little cross on the other. Now the X marks the spot, remember that, and I'll explain it a bit further in the video. Now of course you can die cut the sausage balloons from any color cardstock, even pattern paper, and also you can actually ink blend them to suit the style and theme of your card. Now you wanna die cut three of the stabilizers, which actually act to hold the pieces in their place as you put them together. And I just use scrap cardstock for this because you won't be able to see it when it's hidden behind the finished element of the Magic Iris. Now for the handle, you can die cut one or two pieces. If you wanna die cut two pieces, you'll need to adhere them later on. And having two of them adhere together, it just produces a stronger, sturdy handle for when you turn the element of the Magic Iris. Now there is also an extra tab that has a little arrow on there that you can place onto the handle later on while creating your card. So now that we've gone through all the pieces and die cut them all out, it's now time to assemble the Magic Iris and put it all together. Are you ready? Let's do this. Now for the next step, you're going to need one of the donut rings that you've already die cut and also what I call the wonky die. Now this die has many different names over the internet, especially on YouTube, but for me, I just call it the wonky die. Why? Because to me, it's got three wonky arms coming out of the center of the die. But of course, you can call this die whatever you want. Now, if you have a closer look at the donut ring die, you'll see that it has like a stitch-like imprint on both the inside and the outer side area of the ring. Now these will actually help you with aligning the wonky die correctly. So all you need to do is turn the wonky die upside down and place it on top of your donut ring. Then what you wanna do is line up the wonky die to the center of the stitched area of the inner ring circle. You just want to give it a little bit of a wiggle and maneuver it around a little bit and you should actually feel the die lock into place along the imprint of that circle die. Once you're happy with where it is and where it's positioned, just grab some low tack washi tape and adhere it in place and then run it through your die cut machine. Now once you've die cut with the wonky die, you'll find that it cuts out three little slots and provides three little imprints which will act as a guide for your stabilizers later on. Now stick with me and I'll show you later how that works. Now let's move on to the fun part with the sausage balloons, or what I call the sausage balloons. Now you wanna grab all three of them and also your donut ring that you've used the wonky die on and cut out the little slots and the imprints and grab one of your sausage balloons and simply insert the tab on the end of the sausage balloon into one of the slots. Now to make sure that the magic iris works correctly, you want to make sure that the sausage balloon is aligned correctly with the donut ring. Now the way to make sure that they are aligned correctly is by lining up the sides of the sausage balloon to the outer and inner edge of the donut ring. Once you have one in place, feel free to secure it down with a little bit of low tack washi tape, just to make sure that it doesn't move around too much on you. I actually used a few craft pegs that I had in my stash but feel free to use whatever you want to keep it all aligned correctly. 
just make sure that whatever you do use, you can remove later on down the track. So once you've attached the first sausage balloon, you need to attach the remaining two sausage balloons, just like you did with the first one. Also, just note that whatever you do use to secure them in place, just make sure that you can still see the X on the sausage balloon. You know, the little X that marks the spot? Just make sure that that is vacant and you can still see that X, as that will be important for the next step. Once you've got all three sausage balloons attached to the donut ring, you're then ready to move to the next step. Moving on to step three, which is applying glue dots to the sausage balloons. Now the glue dots are like a clear adhesive in form of a tiny little dot, but they do come in different sizes and the size you need for the magic iris is five millimeters or three sixteenths of an inch in size. Now you can get these on a roll or you can get them on a sheet. Now, as you can see, I'm using the glue dots that come on a sheet, but just be aware you cannot use any other type of adhesive, only the mini glue dots, otherwise the magic iris will not work. As you're aware, there is an X on each of the sausage balloons and altogether there are three Xs. Now, this is where you're going to apply the glue dots X marks a spot for the glue dot, okay? So what you wanna do is apply a glue dot to each one of the X's on each sausage balloon. Now they can be a little tricky to get hold of. Now you can actually use some tweezers or a piercing tool or maybe the edge of your scissors to grab hold of them and then apply them to your sausage balloons. Now mine kept going out of shape every time I tried to grab one, but in the end it still worked. So if you're finding it a little bit difficult, just persevere with it and you will get there in the end. Now, if you have any special tips or tricks on how to use the mini glue dots, please leave me a comment and let me know what that is because I had quite a rough time with these mini glue dots, I can tell you right now. Now, once the glue dots are applied, you simply adhere the second donut ring on top. Now just ensure that the sausage balloons are aligned correctly and then push down on the glue dots so it's adhered well to the donut ring. Now just a reminder that you want to remove any of the washi tape or whatever it is that you use to secure the sausage balloons with because you don't want to leave it behind otherwise it will prevent the magic iris mechanism from working. Now one tip I have to aligning the donut ring correctly is to adhere one part at a time to the sausage balloons by simply moving the donut around with one hand while also feeling the circumference with your thumb and finger. That way you can ensure that the circumference of the donut ring is aligned with the donut ring below it, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we're moving on to step four, which is adhering the stabilizers, the handle, and also the last donut ring. Now you should have die cut three stabilizers, and the purpose of the stabilizers is to hold the mechanics of the magic iris in place, just so that all those little pieces don't move around and the magic iris functions properly with this open and close function. So what you want to do is turn and flip over the magic iris so that it's actually face down so that we can adhere the stabilizers in the correct place. So just a little note that you can actually apply the adhesive to the stabilizers or to the ring itself. I'm personally applying the adhesive to the stabilizers. Now you can use any type of adhesive that you like. I'm personally going to be using a double-sided tape which is approximately half an inch wide. So all you need to do is apply a little bit of adhesive on each end of the stabilizers, but just be sure not to apply any adhesive in the middle of the stabilizer, otherwise it will prevent the magic iris from turning. Now once you finish applying adhesive to all three stabilizers, 
the next thing we need to do is to adhere it to the donut ring itself. Now when adhering the stabilizers to the donut ring, we need to ensure that they're adhered to where the imprints are in the middle area of the donut ring. You also want to ensure that the curve of the stabilizer aligns with the inner curve of the donut ring in the center of the imprint lines. Once you've done the first one, you just need to adhere the two that are remaining. Now, once you have all three stabilizers securely in place, we can now move on to adhering the Magic Iris handle. Okie dokie, we're going to apply the handle now. And the easiest way is to position the Magic Iris so that one of the stabilizers is pointing towards you. So grab your handle and we're going to practice the positioning of where the handle needs to go. So what you're going to do is line up the curved edge of the handle to the inner curved edge of the donut ring. Now you want the handle positioned so that there's a V shape between the stabilizer and also the handle. Now this just ensures that when the handle is pulled open, it will go into its correct position. Now when you're happy with where you're going to align and position the handle and you have it figured out, you need to apply adhesive from the curved edge of the handle to the middle area of the handle. Don't apply adhesive all the way to the end of the handle. Otherwise the recipient's fingers are gonna get stuck when they pull the handle. Now I highly recommend to use some strong adhesive because the handle is going to be pulled by the recipient a few times and the last thing you want is the handle to be pulled off and land in the recipient's hand. Now of myself being left-handed, I actually found that it was a lot easier to apply the handle from the top of the donut ring. So if you're struggling to put the handle where it needs to go, try that. Maybe it's because you're left-handed. Now all you need to do is adhere the handle to the donut ring. Now we're going to add the last donut ring. And if you use score tape for your stabilizers, be sure to take the backing off before you proceed. Then simply position the donut ring on top and ensure it's aligned correctly with the other rings below. If you want to use washi tape or in my case craft pegs to temporarily secure it in place, you can. But just remember to take them off again. Now once you're happy with the position of the donut ring, simply fold the stabilizer over towards the middle of the donut ring. Now the curve of the stabilizer should actually be aligned with the curve and the imprint on the inside curve of the donut ring. Now once you're happy with it in place, then simply push it down and adhere it. Now just a little note for you to remember while you're doing this, you want the stabilizers folded over a little loosely and not too tight, or it will prevent the mechanism of the magic iris from working correctly. Now the way that I personally do it to ensure that they're not too tight is by when the stabilizer is folded over, I actually push from the middle towards the outside of the donut ring, just so it leaves that little tiny bit of wiggle room. Once you've done all that, your magic iris is complete. Awesome. So now is a great time to give the Magic Iris a test run. To do that, you simply hold it in your hands by the edges of the Magic Iris and simply pull down the handle. Now your Magic Iris should open and close, but if you're struggling to open it, try it a few times because it might be a little stiff. Now if you're still having problems, simply go over the steps again and just see where you may have gone wrong. Now don't worry, it can actually take a few practices to get it right, but you will end up conquering it. You just may need to try it again. But if your Magic Iris does open and close, then congrats, your Magic Iris does work. You now know how to create and put together the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris.
Awesome. Now you can create some awesome interactive cards with it. But wait up, there is another step. Now all you need to do is choose an add-on to complete the design of your card that you want to create for your Magic Iris. So let's see what your options are with the Magic Iris add-ons and what you can actually do with them to create the design of interactive card that you want. Now, as you already know, the Magic Iris die set already comes with a donut ring, which is used to create the Magic Iris mechanism. But like I said, you already knew that, right? But if you were to die cut an extra donut ring, it can actually be used as a decorative element for the theme and color of your Magic Iris card. So here I'm going to share with you a few easy ideas with how you can create different looks and designs using just the donut ring. Now to start, you can simply cut out and use any different color cardstock that your heart desires. Now you couldn't get any easier than that. Now you'd obviously use a color cardstock that would complement the theme and the color of the card that you're creating. Now I look at this as the perfect opportunity to use some of your scrap pieces of cardstock that you may have laying around in your stash. So I urge you to get them out and use the Magic Iris to use up those paper scraps to create some awesome Magic Iris designs. Now you could also decorate the donut ring by simply ink blending it. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a nice supply of different color inks, you could have a whale of a time of ink blending them with different colors and different blends to create a different look and feel to every single card that you create. Now, another great way to use your scraps is with pattern paper this time. Just imagine the possibilities with all that pattern paper that you have stashed away in your supplies. Again, you could create a total different look and feel with every single different sheet of pattern paper that you use. Now on to some examples of what you can do with the Magic Iris Scalloped Add-on. I just love this die, especially with the scalloped edge. I think it looks so pretty. Again, you could use cardstock of any color, change your look with different colors, or you could get creative like I did with this one. Now I created this one with the Lawn Fawn Small and also the large dotted circle stackable dies with a few different colors. And of course I use my scrap card stock. And again, I can create different looks and feels with it just by using different colors of card stock with each scalloped add-on that I create. And of course you could do the same. You could ink blend a scalloped add-on using different colored inks as well. Now here's an example of the Magic Iris card that I created using different colored inks to ink blend the scalloped add-on. Now the video of this card will actually be uploaded to my channel pretty soon. So if you like to see how it was created, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. For this one, I use pattern paper, which I think I'm going to use to create a Magic Iris baby card. I just love the subtle colors, the pink and the blue. Now, just a note that might be helpful to you. I always adhere lightweight cardstock to the back of the pattern paper that I'm going to use before I add it to the Magic Iris mechanism. Now, the reason I do this is simply to prevent any bumps or lumps from the stabilizers to appear through or show through the pattern paper itself. Now we're up to my absolute favorite and that is the Magic Iris add-on. Now this die is the absolute perfect size for an A2 card base. The Magic Iris add-on certainly gives you the room to be a little bit more creative. You could even create a scene for your card using the Magic Iris add-on. And of course, you can use any color cardstock on the Magic Iris. Now the Magic Iris add-on has a totally different handle tab compared to the others. 
But all you simply do is adhere it to the handle that you already created before and then just snip off the excess with your scissors and then you're good to go. Now for this one, I actually cut some thin cardstock strips again from my scrap stash and adhered it to lightweight cardstock and then run it through my die cut machine with the Magic Iris add-on die. And again, you could create so many different looks with all different color cardstock strips. Now, of course, you can get your inks out and create an awesome Magic Iris add-on panel. Or you can simply grab your cloud stencil and ink blend some clouds and create a theme card like I did. Here's an example of a card I created using the Magic Iris add-on. It's a little scene of two little mice having a picnic on a beautiful day full of sunshine and rainbows, which includes a cute little sentiment that's related to the theme hidden behind the Magic Iris mechanism. Now this card will also be uploaded to my channel, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that one. And of course, let's not forget the pattern paper. How easy is it just to die cut with the Magic Iris add-on die some awesome pattern paper that you've got in your stash. Just get your pattern papers out and have a hunt around to see what kind of pattern paper you would actually like to create for the theme of your Magic Iris card. I'm sure you've got a whole heap of Christmas papers laying around somewhere. And Christmas at this time of this video is only a few months away. Now I've only shown you these examples on an A2 size card base, but it's just basically to give you an idea of what you can do with the add-on dies. Also, not forgetting how you can also create your centerpiece with a hidden image, sentiment, or any hidden element behind to the Magic Iris add-ons. So now that I've got this selection of Magic Iris add-ons covered, here's an overview of the different types and styles that you can create with them. Now obviously, you can do so much more with the add-ons to create the look and feel and style that you want for your Magic Iris card. So these are just a few examples just to give you an easy place to start. Remember, you're only limited by your own imagination and creativity. Now, as mentioned before, I will be uploading different Magic Iris designs using the different add-ons. So be sure to click that subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you will know instantly when those new videos have been uploaded to my channel. Now, I really do hope that you try out the Magic Iris because I really do think that you'll absolutely love the versatility that you'll get from it to create an interactive card. Now to help you out, I've listed and linked the supplies I've used in the description below. Plus, I'll also link up my Magic Iris playlist so that if you arrived here at a later date after this video has been uploaded, you'll be able to find it easily and all of my Magic Iris projects so that you can binge watch them to your heart's content. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you and if it has, please give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will know to recommend it to others that need help with the Magic Iris. Also, please feel free to share this video with your friends and anyone else that you feel that would benefit from a tutorial on how to put the Magic Iris together in its full working form. I know that I would appreciate it and I'm sure that they would too. Now the most important thing to me is, if you have any questions, be sure to ask, leave me a comment so that I can follow up with another video if I need to, so that I can help you out further. Like I said, I really hope this video has helped you. And if you do like interactive cards and you're just going to love these videos, click them to watch them now. And thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care, stay safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.